Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in today's video I am going to be setting up the leveling on this machine. Now the method that I'm going to be sharing with you doesn't matter the manufacturer or the size of the machine. So even though I'm going to be demonstrating on this huge Monport machine, this method also works for this other smaller laser machine. With all that covered, let's get started. A brief recap of my two-step method is we're going to start out by raising the machine up off the ground, make sure that the casters spin freely. From there, we're going to find out the widest dimension on the machine and then place that level on the linear rail. And we're going to find out what side of the machine is low. And then that side of the machine is what we're going to evenly raise up again counting the number of turns we add to the leveling pad in one corner and doing the exact same in the other corner. And then once we're roughly in level, we'll go and check the other direction, doing the exact same thing. We'll find out what side of the machine is low and evenly raise it up. Again, counting the number of turns that we add to one leveling pad and going to that other corner and adding that back in. We'll let the machine rest or settle overnight, especially if we're on carpet or our leveling feet have rubber pads on them. Once the machine is settled, we'll go and repeat the entire same process all over again using one of these precision machinists level. Now, if you're struggling just a little bit to get that bubble exactly in the middle, don't worry, you can be off a little bit, it's okay. These things are so crazy accurate, you can still be off a little bit and still have a machine that runs very well. This method I've used for many, many years and I get great results and I wanted to share it with you in this video to help you with your setup and save you some time along the way. In the first part of this settling level, I can use something like a standard construction level. This is going to work pretty well. However, when I set the final level, I want to have something that is going to be way more precise than this level. And that is where I will turn to this machinist level. This machinist level is all steel construction and the bottom side is surface ground, meaning it is very flat and extremely straight. Now, even though this is teeny tiny compared to this other level, when we take a look at the bubble size, this machinist level, the bubble is so much wider and this is where all of the accuracy comes from. We're going to get started with this and I have the machine placed in this location based off where I have available power, which is over on that side and the available exhaust over on that side. Now, if you're in a northern climate like I am, we have ground frost throughout the winter months. And if you have that, I suggest placing the machine closer to an interior wall of your area. And if you don't have that and you need to be near an exterior wall, I suggest leaving about two feet of space at least between the wall and your machine. And that's because the ground frost is going to heave that concrete slab sometimes in upwards of an eighth of an inch. I've measured that on industrial equipment and it does happen in some shops. So that'll save you a lot of frustrations of why your machine would run a certain way. But in the winter months, the mirrors get out of alignment and that's because the ground shifted and it shifted the machine throwing the mirrors out of alignment. So now that we've got the placement all set up, we need to have a method to the madness. Otherwise, each of the leveling screws in the four corners of the machine, I'll end up just running around in circles literally for two hours and I'll be no better off than when I started. So in my method, what I do is I start on the longest dimension of the machine. Here it's going to be the width and this is what I'm going to set level to first. I know that the machine might be leaning forwards and it might be leaning back, but I'm not going to measure that just yet. We're also going to see that when I place the level on the machine, I don't want to set it on the outside chassis because 
that's not really what we're trying to set to level. All the important parts on a laser machine are going to be the laser tube located in the back and the linear rails inside of the machine that shuttle the laser head around. That's really what we need level and that is what we'll be placing the level on. I'll start by lowering the leveling pads until the caster wheels are up off the ground. We're also going to see that I placed a wooden block underneath my leveling pad and that's because I'm on carpet here and I don't want this rubber to pressure glue itself down to my carpet, damaging it. I have all four casters up off the ground and now I can start the actual leveling of the machine. Once again, starting with the widest point, I'm going to open the lid of the machine and we're going to take our first level reading. I have the level on the x-axis gantry crane and when we take a close-up look, we're going to see that the bubble is on this side, which means that side of the machine is low, so I'm going to raise that side of the machine. When I raise this side of the machine that's low, to make sure that I raise it evenly, I am going to count the number of quarter turns in the front corner and make sure that I match that adjustment to this back corner, again, ensuring that this side of the machine comes up evenly. The leveling pad style on this machine, it's the economy style, and that means that this threaded rod all the way to the leveling pad, it's all one piece, which means that when I turn this threaded rod, adjusting the level, this pad is going to turn too, and that has a tendency of walking the entire machine around. So that's where I employ the use of a pry bar, or in this case, a two by four, and I can place that underneath the machine, and I'll manually raise the corner of the machine up where I can by hand make the adjustments that I need to. After some adjustments, I now have the bubble kind of in the middle. We'll see that's still off to one side, and that's okay. This is all I need to do for getting it level in this first machine direction. We're moving right along and we've got the machine leveled out in this direction and of course we're going to be checking the level in front and back. I'll be placing the level on the linear rail inside the machine in just a second. I'm going to be checking both sides of the machine to determine whether it is the front side of the machine or the back side of the machine that's low. The level's in place and let's get a reading. I've got the bubble going all the way towards the back of the machine, which means the front of the machine needs to raise up to bring that bubble over to the center. Great, all I need to do is just raise the front of the machine. And just like before, when I add quarter turns to that leveling pad in this corner, I'm going to add the same number of quarter turns to this other side to raise the machine evenly. That way, we don't throw the level out on the machine in this direction. I'll make a couple adjustments and we'll take another level reading. A few adjustments later, and I brought that bubble that was over here and it's moved towards the middle. Yep, it's still crowding one side just a little bit, but for this first part of leveling, this looks great. Off camera, I also moved the level over to the other side of the machine and I got matching level readings on both the left and the right hand side of the machine. Excellent! We've checked and set the leveling in this machine direction and we just got done going in this direction. And as a reality check, I recommend going back to that first direction that we checked just to make sure that that still looks good. And if it's off a little bit, feel free to make some adjustments. That might be an indicator that the machine is already starting to settle a little bit. During this first part of the leveling, we of course saw that I was using this construction level. If you're starting out and you don't have any level at all, I recommend just buying the machinist level. You can still do the leveling that we just did with this level. Just know that having that bubble anywhere in the middle is going to be close enough for this first step. This completes the first step of the leveling method. This next step, we're going to pretend that I let my machine settle overnight. I'm going to be done using this carpenter square. I'm going to set this off to the side 
because I don't need that anymore. And for this step, we're going to be using just the machinist level. And we're going to be repeating the same thing before. We're going to check the level in this direction. Again, if we make any adjustments, we're going to count the number of turns on that side of the machine only. Once that looks perfect or close enough, we're going to go into the other direction and repeat the whole process again. Just be aware that these machinists level, they are crazy accurate. And if you're trying to get it perfectly centered within there, that might not be something that you're able to do. So if you're off a little bit, just know that it's still multitudes better than using a standard construction level. Now this whole time we've been setting the level on the linear rails inside of the machine and that's what I recommend doing. However, when we're done getting all of that leveled out, I recommend coming back to the back of the machine and checking out the level of the laser tube as a prelude to checking and aligning the mirrors on the machine. And let's take a look at what that looks like on this machine. When I check the level, I wanna make sure that I protect the laser tube from the bottom sharp edges of all this nice fine ground metal. I don't wanna chip or crack my laser tube. So what I like to do is take a sheet of paper and I wanna go in a spot where there's no stickers on the laser tube. I'll place that paper on the top and it acts as a nice little cushion blanket and I'll very gently get that set on top. And I just wanna have an idea of if there's an end of the laser tube that is high or low, I don't need to make any adjustments. It's just something good to know before I get to a mirror alignment. I hope that you'll join me in more videos in this series where in the next video, I'll be setting up the water chiller system on this machine, followed up by checking and adjusting the mirror alignment. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.